Good afternoon. My name is Adesua Giwao Sage. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure. Um, I am here with retired Major General. Major. Major. Mm. Retired mm. Major Hamza Al Mustafa. Um, you were a former Chief Security Officer under Zania Bacha. Um, you just ran for election as the presidential candidate in the 2023 election for the AA party, I believe. Mm. Um, and yes, so welcome to Untold Stories. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you so much for speaking with me today. Um, so I've watched a few of your interviews before I came here. Um, I've watched you speak at the Okuta panel and I followed some of your cases. Um, and one thing that you often say is that if people know where you came from, they'll know that wealth was nothing to you. So I want to ask, where do you come from? My name is Hamza Al-Mustafa, <coughs> uh, born into the Hamza's family in Yorba State. Mm -hmm. I did my primary and secondary school in Yorba State, present day Yorba State, then Northeastern State. And then from there, I found myself into Nigerian Military Academy, NDA. And I got commissioned as an officer in 1983. Uh, from there, I began to tour around many parts of Nigeria and outside Nigeria in the course of uh, rendering service to Nigeria. I started from Lagos, the headquarters of military intelligence. Then from there, I was posted to Chad Foreign forces withdrawal from Chad. Uh, it was a warlike uh, situation. And uh, from there, I was posted to Minister of Internal Affairs. Then the presidency at that time, uh, temporarily to get some certain assignments done in restructuring the presidency in 1985. Then from there, I was posted to Internal Affairs again, then Internal Affairs to Army Headquarters in Lagos. Then from there, I also had to go into some certain assignments, one, the Timber Brigade in Calabar, then activities in Bakasi, then from there to 82 Division Headquarters in Ugu, then back to Lagos uh, in Security Group Headquarters then. I served as a coordinator, and then from there to back to Army Headquarters, then later Defense Headquarters, and from there to presidency. From presidency, I was moved to Inugu. And while I was in Inugu, uh, well, destiny had it that I found myself within the wave of political games and I was framed for coup. And I was arrested. I spent 15 years in prison under persecution, proven by court of law. And then from there, I regained my freedom in 2013. From 2013, I found myself out. What did you like about the military? Everything. Such as? Everything. Discipline, organization, uh, intellectual ability or intellectual uh, space for anybody to build there from. Mm -hmm. Patriotism, love of your country, love of your people. And the ability to say, I am the shoulder that the country can lean on with pride. So if you see and know you are a man, then definitely be in the military. Mm -hmm. That's why from all uh, respect, um, as much as the judiciary or the law or practice, the, the justice system in itself, anywhere in the world, see themselves and describe themselves as people who are in a noble assignment. The first that came was not justice, was the military from the beginning, if you go back to the history of mankind. Mm -hmm. So that nobility attached to one's country or in search of peacekeeping, 
peace enforcement, peace education, peace sustenance, then nobility lies with the military. So from this broader perspective, some of us, right when we were toddlers, we began to now look for literatures, books elsewhere from Napoleon and the rest of it to read, to get to know that the best thing you can do if you are man enough is to be in the military, pure, direct to itself, all for your country. So you used to read Napoleon when you were younger. Right, right. Mm. Mm. Um, and when you went in the military, you were working mostly in intelligence, correct? Yeah, I found myself right from uh, when I got commissioned from NDA straight to the military intelligence corps of what the make, Nigerian army. What makes a good intelligence officer? Quite a lot. Can you let me know some of Yeah, sure. It? Capacity to adhere to the ethics, the knowledge of the practice, Mm. Your character, integrity, commitment, concern, ability to keep secret, mm. ability to be creative, uh, respect, sense of discipline, and the rest of it for you to be if you must succeed. Um, so I read somewhere, if you correct me if I'm wrong, that you, mm. um, did you go through training yourself in Libya? No, I didn't. No Korea? No. Israel? No, but we train people there. You train people yeah, there? Yeah, sure, yeah. Did you have relationships with, like, Gaddafi? Yes. You had a personal relationship oh, of course. with him? of course. How did that start? What was that like? Uh, it had to do with the interests of Nigeria and Africa. Mm. I found myself at what one point in time when Nigeria was in a very bad shape. Precisely, that was 1994. Nigeria had it very bad. If you follow the genesis that culminated into the emergence of General Butcher in 1993, November 17. Mm -hmm. Then in 1994, things were very tough. The situation of the country was rough. Foreign reserve was virtually nil. And there was the need for Nigeria to look for support elsewhere. And among those who actually put a lot of efforts had to do with me, which started like a joke and it worked out for Nigeria and indeed West Africa. In the sense that in 1994 that I talked about, we were in Chad, foreign forces was royal from Chad. Uh, some of the commanders who represented Libya in the exercise of foreign forces was royal from Chad. And then France to the south was also, were also people that I got to know who were senior commanders from, from France then Nigeria being the host liaison group, we had a joint meeting where we used to work out on behalf of United Nations mm. withdrawal modalities that were followed through and executed until uh, Lib uh, Chad was free. In that process, I met some Libyan senior officers who in 1994 had grown to be bigger and they were very close to the government. So going to Libya became fundamental. One of it was the fact that a military government General Bacha headed was facing sanctions. Yeah. And then Gaddafi, we realized that has spent us at the time in 1993, uh, November, General Bacha, I mean, Libya had spent 11 years with serious sanctions. And yet life was simpler, cheaper, easier, for Libyans, for some certain counter sanction measures uh, Gaddafi took. So it became inevitable for Nigeria to look at, copy therefrom, and have ties so that the populace in Nigeria can have life easy. Mm. So since I've had a relationship with, this, with these people and I began to communicate with them, and it became easier and it opened the doors that so many other institutions couldn't open for Nigeria. Mm. I paid personal visit. Then it opened for the official visitations and consultations on how to manage sanctions in Nigeria. And then the same thing with Korea. That's why even after the death of a butcher, it's still the same boys, the same officers uh, and men that became instructors in different institutions in Nigeria, despite all the propaganda and castigations. Mm. But they are still the ones who train so many, are still training many in helping the country. You talk about propaganda quite a lot, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to um, Abacha's time in yes, office. Yes, sure. Um, but also, particularly when it came to his death, mm -hmm. um, you have said that the day he died, that the story about the apple is mm -hmm. fake, mm -hmm. um, that there was a, a handshake, I believe. Um, yes? 
No, go uh, ahead. That, Ask it, your question. Yeah, in <laughs> handshake in Namdi Azikwe mm. Airport um, mm. with a member of Yasser Arafat's mm. um, security staff or staff mm. or something. You see, I will tell you this. Okay. In Nigeria, most unfortunately, we have had situations where people who were living in North Pole were busy actively reporting about activities in the equator as if they were the active participants. There were so many assumptions. There were, were so many fairy tales that were sold to Nigerians. It's unfortunate. The, the Arafat visit, the Apple issue are all lies. So the Arafat visit is a lie? Of course. I was there. Okay. We took the president there. If there is anybody who can speak on that, I think with all sense of humility, I'm the one. Mm. So the handshake never happened? It's a lie. Every, many people, you know, people sat down to create a lot of lies. And unfortunately, mm. there are so many of those who conceived and became sponsors of this sustained propaganda over time. But I thought you were directly quoted in an article that Nobody. Saying, no. I was in prison. There were so many things quoted in my name, but I was in prison and never talked. Mm. At the time this story started was in the year 2000, if I can remember, seeing a certain caption of a magazine while we were in court with our lawyers around December, I think. That was the time. It started, but thank God Almighty, an opportunity came in a put up panel. So people have had the little they have had. So 2000 and 2000 from October to December, then June to October 2001. These were the periods I have had opportunity to have responded to some few issues in the country. Mm. Other than that, people didn't know. They were speculative. They were running stories they could not justify. They don't know anything about. And when Mr. A hears this, and if it is an ant, in the next story, they now push it to become a goat. And subsequently, you have many elephants' uh, stories around that never exist. Yes. So this is when you were um, in prison mm. and you were on trial for the assassination of yes. Kudira Tabiola. Yes. The attempted mm. assassination of Alex Ibru. Right. Attempted assassination, I believe, of Pa Abraham Adesanya. Yes. Um, attempt on Even though I was never organic. tried for that. Mm -hmm. um, so these are mm. some of the some of the charges you faced. Well, the greatest happiness I am having today. Yes. Is the fact that those who cook this story to be able to nail me, they know what they are afraid of. They know what they have done to Nigeria. And I thank God Almighty the 15 years of persecution, five years, two months, which was totally solitary, mm. with torture that uh, you hardly can define with ease. Mm. I went through, and thank God I'm looking the way I'm looking. I came back with numerous injuries. But that aside, I know. The faces we went through with the president, then General Abacha, uh, fetched me hatred from numerous people who believe Abacha shouldn't have been allowed to serve Nigeria for three months. And to us, if we take an oath of office, if we stand for this as an official assignment, mm. uh, I'm not making mouth, but you can find out each person has his own background. If I have my troops under me, I'm not sitting to say I'm the, the uh, the lazy, uh, lazy type, um, the Ajabota-oriented type. Uh, I'm in the field with my own staff. I'm in the field with my own soldiers. Mm -hmm. Training is continuous and is every day of all kinds, from active to passive security. Mm -hmm. If you have to deal with us to contain a place, then you have a Herculean task to do. I'm not making out, but those who did what they did at that time knew what they were facing. So the best thing to do was, first of all, to even ignite friction between General Bacha and I. People never reported that. They would write petitions, send it to General Bacha. All they wanted was for me to give way so that they can deal with him. There were three coups in the history that came up with that, including the coup attempt of 1997. They wrote petitions mm -hmm. so that they could detach me, one, either to go on course, two, uh, either General Bacha should get angry with me and then make sure that I'm, I'm pushed to head somewhere outside the presidency, but all for them to be to kick him out. 97, that's DR, right? Yes, that's, that's DR, school, 1997, yes. That's it. Mm. So you said that you are... Uh, 
in the field with your soldiers. You're not the Ajabota type, oh, you're not course. the lazy type, you're working. Mm. So mm. I want to ask you about the strike force. Mm. It existed. Yes, it is still existed. And it still exists. Yes. Not for us, for the whole country. For the whole country. Minor strike force in any security setting in a country. Mm. You are just joking. It is what else was the consumption. You know, at that time, they were looking for anything to castigate General Butcher, to castigate us or the government in itself. The consumption of a strike force, I did it. What, is the, what was the need for strike force? In a military setting, the, most, the major threat you can look at is coup making. Mm. So to be able to use a very small force with uh, the capacity to halt a larger moving force was what you require. So, this so I conceived the idea. Yes. And we now use doctrines from major countries around the world. And we filtered it and picked some certain part of it and created it as our course contents of different segments that formed the strike force. Okay. Yes, I did that. So you did and I, in some certain countries, people who conceived this and did it for their country are honored with a national award in their country. Today, every agency in Nigeria has strike force. Every. If it was bad, why did they adopt it? Why is it still being adopted? Why is it accepted in your doctrine? In the absence of that, you can't sleep well. You cannot come to ask me this question. So we did that to keep Nigeria in peace and afloat. And people didn't understand what we were doing. All they understood, particularly those who sponsored the games, of telling the magazines where they have a lot of shares in them. Some papers where they have shares in those, those newspapers. And them abusing us almost every day. But what we have done is for the country, not personal thing. So I definitely do think that there is truth, some truth in what you're saying, like that they are no, honored uh, abroad. This is a universal practice, the whole world over. But I want to say, like, you know, mm. in Nigeria, mm. sometimes uh, things are not necessarily used how they're supposed to be used. It right? all depends on who. Mm -hmm. You see, for you to understand this, there are, this is an opportunity for me to say this. As at 1993, mm. all intelligence community members we are not represented in the presidency. I introduce it. Everything we were doing, every security agency, particularly let's start with the intelligence community, they were in the villa. And I created that cells for them. They monitor, they are the liaison between the presidency and their mother unit. For example, SSS wasn't there. They hadn't an office that was that established with a commander inside the office of the president. I did it. NRA, I did it. Mm. Defense Intelligence Agency, I did it. Representative from Directorate of Military Intelligence, I did it. Every single thing happening in the villa, from their, uh, from their mother's service to the presidency and from presidency to them. So there was that mutual communication which the modern world at that time had adopted. And we too, we adopted it and I introduced it for the first time. But and then we didn't even stop there. Immigration, custom. Even those who all actually at the surface, one may think, they, you don't need them, but we brought them. So every single thing the presidency was doing, mm. the entire services in Nigeria, all security services on passive security and active security were aware of what was going on. You know, for an outsider, that looks mm. more like consolidation of power in a non-democratic society. No, you got it wrong. Okay. You got it wrong. What we were doing was harnessing the intelligence flow in the country for the country. That's why the entire services that, that form part of passive and active security were actively represented in the presidency. Can I ask, if mm. is it for the country or is it like to prevent, for example, you said that in primarily in a military mm. system mm -hmm. is the prevention of coup. No, I say in a military government, yes. when you are rating threats, yes. the first thing you rate is actually the first threat you see in your eyes is coup. Yes. So if there is a coup, that can contain it. But that doesn't mean that is the only threat. But that's not a threat to the country. It's right? a threat to the country. Okay. See, once you have a president in, mm -hmm. whether it is military or politics, 
or uh, democracy, whichever ours as soldiers is to keep the leadership afloat irrespective of situations. That was the type of role I had and ours was to keep it afloat. Mm. They had a transition with my rank and my oath of office, oath of commission, oath of office, these three, is for me to adhere to it. And to some of us, nothing will ever make us change it. You can hate me for doing that, but that is the, what I have signed for, and that is what the country trained me for. That's what the country subjected me to take oath from. To be a traitor, to be a betrayer, that's where millions or billions of miles apart from it. Once we take oath, we stick to it. Mm. How do you feel about the death penalty as a punishment? Death penalty, first, as a soldier, the day I decide to put my finger in hot water, I know it is going to burn. I'm a soldier. I have signed. It is part of it there. Treason are punishable by death. Mm. Every soldier is aware of this, even before you get commissioned. I know that. If I, God forbid, in my career had had anything to make me participate in a coup, and if I fail and you see me cry, then take note. Right from the beginning, I was a traitor. Right from the beginning, I wasn't a soldier. And then for you to know that, for me to be crying out, for an offense I knew, I'm planned, I knew the dangers of it. Then for me to come seek him for begging, then you should know that you have invested in somebody who had nothing to do with military qualities at the surface. That's why in peacetime, everybody is a superhero. In crisis time, that's when the country should look deeply. Then it is then you will know you are real soldiers. Mm. And Nigerians, particularly politicians, get deceived. The comparison I used to give here is that politicians, because they don't know much of the military, they have two choices between goats and lions. And in most cases, politicians go for goats. The difference here is that goat has a horn. A lion hasn't a horn. So they believe goat can do more harm at the surface. So that is it. In the military, unless you know, you will end up taking goats to command lions. And that's a big mistake we have been making in Nigeria. From eye service, from lies telling, from pretending to be the macho macho, from those who pretend to have the guts that they do not have. They deceive those who make them kings. And so they are there commanding lions. And that has a lot of it has affected this country a great deal. And that's why there is always the need to say, if we have a military government, then you need some politicians to support you because there are some other aspect of politicians in looking at a government. So long you have a government that is fractional in participation, in adversary, you are not complete. You are making a big gap and that may affect you. And vice versa, in democracy, you need loyal, committed, knowledgeable military officers who should, from their retirement pool, to be seen to be supportive of you in pointing at gaps and help you correct them so that you can carry all along. I'm going to go back to when you said, if somebody, if a soldier, mm -hmm. you know, participates in or plans or conspires mm -hmm. um, a coup and then he mm -hmm. ends up crying because mm -hmm. he's caught and he does not have the qualities of a soldier. Mm. Um, and you also said, God forbid, you have ever participated. In if a I had ever. If you had ever participated. And in a God coup. forbid I was caught and you see me crying, then you better know that from the onset I was a traitor. Unfortunately, I found myself into the military. Mm. A soldier who knows his worth. Once you know you have done it, according to the oath, according to the teachings, according to the expectations of you as a son, true to itself of that country, as a patriot who came to serve your country, mm -hmm. the moment there is something wrong, you should own it up and accept and speak out. Mm -hmm. Because you see, act of cowardice, unknown to many, pardon my language, many uh, civilians who are non-military officers, they don't know the gravity of the word Cowardice is a military. It's a capital offense, whether as a commander or in your followership. That's why you see when cowardice is exhibited in the field, you see some lawyers who will rush to the field to be talking about human rights for those who exhibited cowardice. 
in a very serious country, particularly the countries we are trying to copy there from. If we sit down and examine the way they see it and the way they treat it, the way they handle it, legally, morally, because whatever you do, that reflection permeates into your junior ones. It permeates into the entire establishment. So you think how it is and that punishable? Is, that, of course. It's a capital offense. A capital offense. Absolutely. Cowardice, especially in a state of emergency, if your country is fighting anything, even this Boko Haram today, and then you go to the field as either a commander or a soldier, you exhibit cowardice. Go and I want you to take a look at the book. And whosoever compromises that, he's compromising your safety, he's compromising your nationality. That's why it is called a noble work. If you are ready to do it, please do it. Soldiering is a different thing entirely. It's here we are looking down on the military. The position of a military anywhere in the world to a country that knows where it matters. You cannot downplay your military because you are in democracy. See, this is a fundamental question you have asked. And many people are ignorant of it and they are in positions of power. Yeah, see, I think we, see mm. if tomorrow you become president of Nigeria, you are now the commander in chief. And cases of cowardice are reported, and you are now to determine verdicts when courts have given verdict, and you now want to temper justice with mercy. I didn't say you shouldn't do it, but do it in such a way that you will not encourage other activities or acts of cowardice in future. Any military, any security setting that promotes that is doomed. And commanders who promote and allow that to happen under their care are not needed. Are not needed. You have to know, see, when you say military, think deep. Take a look at the books. It is only here in Nigeria we look down on our own. Take U.S., the example you are giving me, from the same U.S. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard what they do with cowardice Number one. Have you ever heard or seen the commander-in-chief or executive officers, governors, and elected officers all across in legislature looking down in the military, no matter how minute. What they don't understand is the fact that military is the shield democracy requires to survive. Subordination of the military to democratic entrenchment is what you require to say we are now fully footed in democracy. I'm coming. Once these practices are entrenched, mm. you can go to bed with your eyes closed. But for us, we don't have that experience. We, we have it. We don't have the experience America has. Instead of the no, military, no, no. See, instead of the military being the shield to our democracy, the military took our democracy from us as see? a society. Okay, you we want have to, a you want to discuss this with me? Different relationship. You school with the in military. US, correct? Yes. I school in US. Mm -hmm. I also school. Hold here. on. In the same military, yes. not any other thing, military, that's what took me to years. Mm. And some of us, this is what is called comparative studies between armies and countries for a long time. Mm. I'm sure you are a baby then. I started this in 1987. I was in US 87. I was in Bonn. Finish. So what I'm telling you mm. are practical things. I don't have to do with what you see, watch in films. Or no, I'm talking of realism from the provisions of doctrine of militaries around the world, yes. the laws governing countries, governing militaries, including our own. The, adv the, the, the adventures some people have had in military participation in political activities or in providing leadership to Nigeria, keep that aside. We can't keep that aside. No, you have to. It's me you are talking to. Mm -hmm. If I have had a political office, mm. if I had had an adventure that put me into a political office, you can ask that. But there are these questions you want to. There are specific people who have had political, military political offices, you can ask. You don't know my standing on that. A general that you see, anywhere you see, an officer from second lieutenant to a general to field marshalship if there is any. A soldier who is a private, the sons of the poor, most of them are uh, the source of happiness that you see because that is the shield that makes you sleep well. Mm -hmm. And so long there is democracy or some certain people in democracy and see military with disdain. That disdain, that attitude, that, uh, that uh, uh, display of 
lack of sense of belonging to the military, it kills the fighting spirit. In America today, if there is any person whosoever he is, in his actions, in his sayings, in his conduct, that has anything to do with the moral state of a soldier, of a soldier, he is on his way out of, the, of, of, of politics. Wait, that is the mutual respect and understanding you require. I'm coming. The threats facing Nigeria are much more bigger than the threats facing America. Yes. You know that? I agree. You know that? Yes. Okay, that is to say, whatever a typical American soldier exhibits in defending, in promoting, in, 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 in shielding, and in giving passages for the protection of America at home or outside, a typical Nigerian soldier is expected to do more. Correct? Because you say you agree. I think, but I think you're missing something here. No, no, no. I you, think you're you. absolving the military of the responsibility in, in, in the relationship that we have with the military. You came no. into power. Mm -hmm. You came into power in Abacha's regime. I have been there. That, yes. Where but was the, I all your, along? Your, you, would, mm -hmm. you had been in military intelligence, but I would say your most high mm -hmm. profile mm -hmm. position mm -hmm. was as the CSO mm -hmm. in the Abacha regime. Mm -hmm. That regime came but that doesn't about mean as, that, that, as a, as, as a posing of ho, ho, democratic exercise that happened in... Mm -hmm. you, we had a democratic election. Mm -hmm. And then after mm -hmm. the election, there was an annulment. Mm -hmm. After the annulment... Which government was that? It was the IPP government. Mm -hmm. But a lot of historical sources mm -hmm. do say mm -hmm. that Abacha was for the annulment. Al-Mustafa, you said? Abacha. Oh, okay. All yes. Right. Mm -hmm. But I feel that you can now, you can't say that mm. the populace, the young people, mm. the general public mm. has no trust in the military and mm. does not respect the military when the experience of it mm. is not as a shield but as a sword. Mm. A lot of, a lot of regular, no. I'm seeking as a normal, as a regular Nigerian, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And you can only compare this maybe to like how you see police brutality with black people in America mm, mm. is that if you have experienced the brutality of the Nigerian mm. military, mm. the randomness mm. of how violence can be meted upon you mm. how, and there is no recourse to justice. Okay. All right. Which, which one you is your, no, respect. which is your question here now? Huh? What is the question? Because I my, want to respond to this. No, my, I, this, is not even the, this is the conversation. This is not even the question. No, my, no, my, no. I, I feel like you're absorbing the military of having not. any responsibility uh, you, you got it wrong. in how we see them. No, you got it wrong. It's not always a Ho shield. Hold on. You got it wrong. For example, while I was here in Abuja, mm. you can ask people who were there in the 90s. Did we allow soldiers to be brutal to people? And what were we doing? Let me tell you this. To those who knew Abuja, they knew that we used to arrest police in uniform who were long captain when they commit offense. We used to arrest soldiers, they were long captain. We used to arrest them and they are punished. The fact that that wasn't published or that wasn't broadcast, it doesn't mean we were not doing. I'm not saying the entire military in Nigeria are completely clean. Mm. And I'm also not saying that the entire military with the referral you are making in U.S. are clean. No. Mm. Human beings are human beings. The chameleotic nature of a human being makes him a subject that you have to look and look and always look again. And that's why the qualities in leadership of true man management principles comes to play. Mm. I'm talking to you because it's a heavy responsibility to manage men. Correct? Yeah. So here are your question. All I'm t telling you is that what is expected to be? I am in politics. I am promoting politics in Nigeria, and we want to get it entrenched. In the same way, from the wall practice, we shouldn't be left behind. Mm. We are also promoting excellence, loyalty, commitment, and service from the military on the other hand. But the two should be seen to be carried along in protecting Nigeria, in defending Nigeria, in giving us the peace we require at all cost. That is what is expected of a soldier. A typical, a typical general you see is from the time he began 
to the time he became a general. By all definitions, as it is around the whole world, he is already an institution. But here, there are some generals that I see. I'm not happy with many of them. We, some of us is tongue lash the one we see. They salute, abuse, da, 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 da. they are more or less beggars to those who are to promote them. That is disservice. That is unacceptable. The qualities of somebody who, in the field, in the face of threats, no matter the magnitude, he is the person that will give you confidence to sleep well. Because he can lead men in irrespective of situations to be. A general is not a beggar. A general should not be seen to be seeking for, you provide for according to the laws. So that the excellence in them is your security. The excellence, that bravery, that knowledge, that capacity will make them to be seen to be comparable with any other person who wishes to threaten your country. The whole world over, that's what countries are doing. Why should you turn your own into beggars like before they can grow? That is the service to the democracy, the service to the country in itself. That's what I'm telling you. Some people woke up and just say, we'll go to war, ba 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 with Niger. I spoke, even though it was in Hausa, that's why many people didn't hear. You can't plunge a country into a country that is not prepared for. Because if that had happened, this interview wouldn't take place. That's why, in peacetime, everybody can roll. In crisis time, there are exceptionally few who will show their heads including the military. If you have taken the cowards to defend your country, that is a terrible investment. I have never changed from this. I will never ever change. And you know the most important thing to tell you? In Nigeria, you have the qualities that makes a soldier and a soldier indeed a source of pride, a source of happiness. Our sons and daughters who stood yesterday, who fought for the country then, who are here ready to do so, but they are discouraged. Torture. If, if you said you experienced torture. Of course. Five years, seven months is a common knowledge. You, um, when you were in prison? I was in Ekoi prison. Yes. I was in Kirikiri prison. Yes. I was in Koje prison. Yes. That is for uh, uh, nine years, eight months put together in these three places. The remaining five years, two months are in numerous parts of Nigeria. And it was horrible. You were. I, I leave it at that. Mm. It was extremely horrible. 